Cell division is when one cell divides to become two. In unicellular organisms, this is how they reproduce. They make a copy of their genetic information and then split into two different cells. In multicellular organisms, cell division serves two main functions. Cell division gives us new cells so that our bodies can grow and develop, and also cell division allows us to renew old, worn out cells or to repair cells that are damaged. And in fact, your cells are dying all the time. The cells in your skin get replaced about every month. Only a few cells are with you for your whole life, and those are your nerve cells. Other than your nerve cells, all the cells of your bodies can get replaced, even your bones. And on average, every cell in your body is replaced about every seven years. There's a Buddhist saying that says you're not the same person you were when you were a six-year-old. And there's actually some biological reasoning to that wisdom. Binary fission literally translates to splitting in half. Binary means two, and fission means splitting. And that's how prokaryotes reproduce. And compared to eukaryotes, this process is really pretty straightforward. The chromosomes of the bacteria duplicate, meaning they replicate themselves. And then the cell begins to grow and pinches off and eventually divide. This form of replication is only ever asexual, where two clones come from one. And genetic variation really only comes into play when mutations occur within a life cycle. The life cycle of a eukaryotic cell has three main phases. Most of its life is spent in interphase, where as a cell it grows and a copy of the chromosomes are created. In the process known as mitosis, the nucleus as well as the chromosomes divide. And once the nucleus divides into two, the cell continues to grow apart and finish the division in a process known as cytokinesis. Interphase is the process of the cell cycle in which the cell grows and the chromosomes replicate. The first step is known as G1, which stands for gap 1, and it's the gap between the division of the cells and when the chromosomes replicate. When the chromosomes replicate during interphase, they're spaghetti-like and really difficult, verging on impossible to see with a microscope. But this process is known as the S phase. The G2 phase begins when the chromosomes are duplicated, but before the chromosomes condense. And it's important to note that growth of the cell occurs in all of these steps in interphase. Alright, mitosis is all about the chromosomes that are held within the nucleus. Mitosis begins when the spaghetti-like chromatin during interphase condenses into chromosomes. And chromosomes resemble X's, and there's usually many within the nucleus of a cell. Each chromosome has two copies of DNA, and one copy is included in each sister chromatid. Imagine having two long balloons. You know, the ones that clowns used to make giraffes or monkeys or hats at birthday parties. If you took two of those balloons and attached them together, much like a clown would, you'd have something that looks sort of like a chromosome. Each one of the balloons would be a sister chromatid, and there's two of them. Where the two balloons connect would be called the centromere region. These sister chromatids are connected by long spindle fibers. However, they're almost impossible to see with the microscope. But we know they're there because these fibers are what pull the sister chromatids apart during mitosis. And the place where those spindle fibers connect to the centromere region of the sister chromatid is called the kinetochore. In this slide, we zoomed out from a single chromosome to an entire cell. Here you see the cell encased in a cell membrane with a line of several chromosomes. Spindle fibers attach to the kinetochores of the sister chromatids in the middle of the cell. And on the ends, those same spindle fibers connect to a structure called the centriole. And there are always two centrioles in each cell, one for each side of the cell, and are referred to as centriole pairs. These centriole pairs serve as an anchoring point on the cell membrane. They also serve as a winch, pulling the spindle fibers closer and closer towards it, serving to separate the sister chromatids from one another. If you watch the entire process of mitosis, the phases are really a continuum. One phase runs into another, really without any distinct breaks. And a lot of the students get these phases mixed up. So I came up with a handy, kind of stupid mnemonic device that you can help to keep them straight. And it is, party people make a trend. 
Party People stands for the first two stages of mitosis, prophase and prometaphase. You may also see these phases as early and late metaphase, and they mean basically the same thing. Let's get back to my mnemonic device, Party People Make a Trend. Uh, the make stands for metaphase, the A stands for anaphase, and the T stands for telephase. But you don't have to use mine, you can make up your own. Remember, interphase is the phase where cells grow and the chromosomes are relaxed. When the chromosomes are relaxed like this, they're known as chromatin, and they sort of resemble spaghetti in a bowl. The first phase of mitosis is known as prophase. It's easy to differentiate the interphase from prophase because the chromosomes condense and become easily visible with a good microscope. While the chromosomes condense, the nuclear envelope begins to break down. And if you're looking for a good research project for graduate school, you can investigate how this happens because it's really poorly understood. Also at this stage, the spindle fibers begin to grow from the centrioles at the edge of the cell. But this is also pretty hard to see. Prometaphase used to be called late prophase, so you'll hear that terminology, but they both mean basically the same thing. At this point, the nuclear envelope completely disappears. The spindle fibers continue to grow from the centrioles, and the chromosomes begin to move toward the center of the cell. Metaphase always reminds me of my short-lived career as a professional country line dancer. In this phase, chromosomes make a perfect line. This great gathering is known as the metaphase plate. And at this point, the centriole pairs have made it to the polar opposite ends of the cell, and the spindle fibers that were growing from the centrioles finally attach to the kinetochores of the sister chromatids, and now we're in business. In anaphase, the sister chromatids break their loving embrace and go to their new homes. And they look a lot like the fingers of a clasped hand as it's separating. When the sister chromatids do finally break at the centromere, they are now known as daughter chromosomes. This whole process is driven by the constriction of the spindle fibers that are attached to the centriole pair. The centrioles act as an anchoring point and then winch the daughter chromosomes toward it by constricting the spindle fibers. And then magically the nuclear envelope begins to appear. We still don't really know how this process happens. But when it happens, the cell is officially in the telophase part of mitosis. And also the chromosomes begin to uncoil, and the spindle fibers completely disintegrate. And then the two daughter cells move further apart. Cytokinesis is the final stage of cell division. And it's technically not a part of mitosis because mitosis just involves the division of the chromosomes. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytosol of a cell after the division of the chromosomes. In animals, cytokinesis forms a structure known as a cleavage furrow, shown up top, and in plants, a structure is formed known as a cell plate. The reason they look different is that plants form cell wall, whereas animals don't. In animals, their phospholipid bilayer cell membranes squeeze together and eventually pinch off, and the pinching off part is called the cleavage furrow. This soccer player's knee will be as good as new in a few weeks, thanks to mitosis a type of cell division that generates new cells for growth and repair. Let's move into a cell to witness the events of mitosis. Before a cell can divide, it must first duplicate the chromosomes stored in its nucleus. During chromosome duplication, several bubbles open up along the chromosome. Each bubble grows until it merges with an adjacent bubble. Each chromosome now consists of two identical copies called sister chromatids. Getting closer, we see that each sister chromatid consists of DNA wound around small proteins called histones. The sister chromatids begin to coil into tight helical fibers. Outside the nucleus, Centrosomes that duplicated earlier move away from each other to opposite sides of the cell. Microtubules extend from the centrosomes, forming the mitotic spindle. 
Back in the nucleus, the DNA forms loops, becoming more compacted. These structures fold back on themselves, eventually condensing into a shorter and thicker chromosome consisting of two sister chromatids. As the chromosomes continue to condense, the nuclear envelope breaks up. The array of spindle microtubules is now extensive, and the chromosomes are fully condensed. Spindle fibers from each pole attach to protein structures located at the centromere of each sister chromatid. As the chromosomes are bound by spindle fibers from opposite poles, they move first one way and then another. The counteracting forces of the spindle eventually cause all the chromosomes to end up at the center of the cell, as if arranged on an imaginary plate. The sister chromatids are released from each other, each becoming a full-fledged chromosome. They are moved toward opposite poles of the cell, pulled along the spindle fibers attached to them. At the same time, overlapping spindle fibers that are not attached to chromosomes continue to lengthen, pushing the poles farther apart. Once the chromosomes arrive at their destination, they become less condensed. Two new nuclear envelopes form, completing mitosis, the division of one nucleus into two genetically identical daughter nuclei. The cytoplasm divides by the process of cytokinesis, forming two separate daughter cells. In your body, millions of cells divide every second, providing new cells for growth and for repair of damaged cells. All right, here's your test. What phase is this? Did you guess anaphase? All right, what phase is this one? Oh, duh, it tells you right there at the bottom. <laughs> All right, what phase is this one? And the answer is not on the bottom of this one. All right, you got it? Did you guess cytokinesis? If so, you were right. Okay, what phase is this one? If you guess telophase, you are right. All right, this one's a little tricky. Which phase is this one? Hmm. It's prophase. And here's prometaphase. So compare the two and make sure you know the difference between them.